Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And uh, as most of you may know who followed this channel for a while and me mentioning it, that I'm a tile setter. And uh, I was hired to move a commode flange as a freebie for some firewood for some people that I'm working for. And uh, the way I do that is like this. If it's down in a concrete slab, the, uh, the pipe sticking up, it's difficult to cut it low with a little jam saw or anything like that. So it's best if you reach down inside the pipe with a circular blade and cut the pipe on the inside. And um, what I did is I set a wire to the depth of the piece of a pencil looped in it and a little bend, and I was able to run that around and mark the inside of the pipe where I can see it nice. It's new plumbing, it's nothing old, so I was able to mark it. Now I gotta cut it, and I've done this before with a soup can lid, but uh, I figured this is a good opportunity to show you how to use a divider and scale to uh, make circulars and to count out teeth to make your own little blade. Uh, this is a one-off thing. It will be probably destroyed by the time I'm done using it, but it will hold up. So I'm going to set up the camera stand on the counter and uh, get a good shot of the countertop. That way you can see what it is I'm going to do and I'll explain it. And uh, there's some tips in this that will help you when it comes to bolting flanges together. So I'm hoping that uh, a lot of people will see this, uh, especially anyone that fabricates their own circular flanges to bolt together. There's formulas for counting out your bolt holes, but this makes it easy. So I'm gonna get the camera set up and we'll proceed. See you in a minute. Okay, so we got our half inch bolt, two nuts and two washers. This bolt is eight inches long. I'm gonna cut this portion off and that'll be the shaft that mounts in the half inch drill. The blade will go between those two washers and lock down. So I can reach down in the hole and cut around the inside. Uh, oh, countertop's a mess. We'll need the scale, we'll need the piece of steel, we'll need the divider, a little hammer, pencil and a center punch. I'm gonna get rid of these spikes. Wad up this paper. Oops, that was a good spike. Darn it. Hold on a second. Let's get the camera a little set up better. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go corner to corner and find the middle of this square. It's not the only way to do it, but it's quick. And we'll make a center punch mark there. A little center punch. Get over here where you can see good. All right. Now the inside diameter of that pipe is uh, will be comfortable to fit something like three inches in there, but I'm going to go like a two and a half inch. So half of two and a half is one and a quarter. So I'm going to mark that on the divider. All right. I'm going to engage it in the center mark there. Drive me a line around. All right. I'm going to deepen that mark with a pencil, make it easier to see. I'll use a sharpie. Alright, now we're getting to the fun part here. 
the divider is already set up to make this so if you want to space your holes evenly or in this case saw teeth go ahead and mark for the first one and if you use six holes you can walk this divider around and it'll hit them all six so if you're making flanges or something that's going to bolt together that's circular using six enables you to do this trick now we can't have just six saw teeth but this gives us a place to start Remember, we got inch and a quarter spacing on the divider. And boom, lands right there on the first mark again. Okay, now you got to divide inch and a quarter in half. And uh, set the divider up for that. So half of an inch and a quarter is five eighths of an inch. So we'll set the divider up for that. You want to be kind of finicky and get it just right. And you get your spacing pretty well even around the circle. Open the whole edge. Yep, five eighths. All right. You can check it one mark the divider is a little bit off so you can go right between them marks and you can scratch your mark in there alright see what you got there if you want to go finer you can divide it down again but uh, I think for my purposes I'm gonna do that one more time dividing the middles go to 5 sixteenths check it the same way
<laughs> so if you're making little gears and stuff, you know, little crude gears is a good way to do it. Notice all the marks are spaced evenly. I marked them on the outside of the circle. That's all right because all I got to do is dot them to the inside of the circle to cut it. So I'll go ahead and do that, cut this piece out, and we'll get back to you. See you in a minute. All right, I've set up the piece with a couple of backers on it in the vise, and I'm going to drill a half inch hole through it uh, with a standard hand drill. And we'll do that and see you in a minute. All right, I'm going to take my Dremel with my cutoff wheel, and I'm going to slit down as far as the marks. As far as how deep the marks go, I just used the chisel tip of the marker to make each one stamp the same. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you one, and then uh, I'll do the rest off camera. one tooth. Now you see this is going to take a while, so I'm going to do all this and uh, get back to you with the finished tool and we'll talk about it. See you in a minute. Alright, we finished our little blade here. See how I notched it out. What I didn't tell you I was going to do is I filed every other tooth uh, on the front side here, the cutting side, one direction, and then every opposing tooth the other direction. Then I took a small pointed hammer over the lip of the vise and knocked every other tooth down just slightly, flipped it over, and did the same thing. So you have this opposing tooth pattern just like a traditional old wood cutting saws had. Uh, not that I'm wanting this to last a hundred years, but if you're going to do something, you might as well do it right to where it'll hold up through that one job you made it for. Anyway, we've got our half inch bolt, and I've set a nut back, and a big washer install the blade on it like so and apply your other washer and the reason I wanted to use these flat washers instead of lock washers there's not apt to warp the blade and when you tighten these two up that's very rigid so I'm gonna cut this head off right here which there's no need for you to watch me do that and this will chuck in the half inch drill and I'll be able to Put it down inside the pipe and carefully cut. I'm not going to push the blade too hard because I don't know what it is. It's just metal. It's thicker than the soup can I used last time. Well, that's all I got for this evening. I hope you gleaned something from this and learned a little bit about using a scale and divider. Till next time, bye.